Hello guys, it's late, it's Friday slash Saturday morning, and I want to sit back here, and I want to just splurge out some of my thoughts about the upcoming games in the NFL. A lot of people have been watching me talk for a long time. And I want to say this about the L.A. Rams. I was completely wrong on the L.A. Rams. Maybe a part of it was preseason hype. Maybe I was upset with how much preseason hype the L.A. Rams were getting. I like to try to be bold with my statements. I don't like to really brag when a team starts to fail. If the Redskins failed, their fans don't like me. I don't really want to scoop dirt on the grave. The Jacksonville Jaguars, why should I alienate people? Um, I know it'll get a couple more views. I was right about Jacksonville, though, because they don't have a quarterback and they don't have a head coach. Sean McVay is brilliant. But Jared Goff has qualities that I overlooked when I should when I called him when I said that Luis Perez is better than Goff when I said Webb was better. I thought Jared Goff had poor pocket awareness. It ends up he does have a great line. He's not fleet of foot. He's good enough. Jared Goff is a really accurate passer. He throws the ball before defenders have a chance to tip the football. He knows the offense. He's smart. He's even keeled. He's a good player in this league. I'm not going to say he's elite. He's pretty damn good though right now. Less need by acquiring Marcus Peters, by acquiring Dante Fowler. He's playing aggressively. He deserves to be commended. The Rams on a neutral field are the best team in the NFC. They were down 35-17 to in the Superdome. And you know what? They tied the freaking game up or came within three points of the Saints. Away from home after playing a really terrible first half. That tells me that by the third quarter when they shut down Drew Brees, they are the better team than the Saints. Now the Saints might get home field advantage. And if the Saints go 14-2, and 15-1 and one and get home field, there's a chance that the Saints will beat the Rams. But on a neutral field... I'm taking the Rams in that rematch. I give the coaching edge to Sean McVay. I give the defensive line's edge to the Rams. I give the secondary's edge to the Rams. I give the preparation to the Rams. Drew Brees is better, but that's about all I can say. I like Kamara a whole lot. I like Michael Thomas a whole lot. But still, the whole of the Rams' parts, even without Cooper Cup, they're a better football team. Congratulations to the Rams on an amazing season. You guys know how to win. Last year when you were 11 and 5, you would lose close games to Seattle. That game in, that game at the Coliseum last year with Jared Goff, he didn't know how to win yet. You would be 11 and 5. This year you're a juggernaut. You're a fantastic team with an amazing and all-time great coach and a quarterback that might as well be a Hall of Famer one day with a running back that is a Hall of Famer with the great one of the greatest defensive players we've ever seen. If you win a Super Bowl championship, congratulations. It would truly be deserved. And that's my message to Rams fans. And I know you Rams fans are even going to like this more. I don't even, sometimes, you know, I can be extra stubborn when, I, when I'm wrong, but I think a lot of people are very stubborn when they're wrong. I'm going to say this to Rams fans, and I'm not just saying this to make you feel better. You guys are going to absolutely hammer the Kansas City Chiefs. And trust me, I have a lot more Chiefs fans on here than Rams fans. I have Chiefs fans that watch Mahomes videos. There is no path to victory for Kansas City. They can't stop Todd Gurley, even though their defensive line is getting better. They're not great in any area defensively. Jared Goff and Sean McVay in that game plan is going to attack Bob Sutton in that secondary and Ron Parker. Brandon Cooks is going to have big plays. 
but Todd Gurley might run for 250 yards. But here's the kicker. This is why they're going to lose the game. Up front, they're starting backup guards. Arizona's defense was able to get to Kansas City's. I know the Rams give up a lot of running the football, but Andy Reid loves to throw the ball. The Chiefs haven't really had any adversity this year. The Rams just came up off a loss to the Saints. The game is in their house. Aaron Donald and Sue are the best defensive tackles in the NFL against guards that are really below average. This offensive line is not playing really well. The Chiefs are limping into this game. Maybe Kareem Hunt will run for 200 yards. Maybe Patrick Mahomes will make the incredible throws against Marcus Peters and the secondary of the Rams. I think Joyner might be hurt. I'm not sure. I think Tlaib still might be hurt. Maybe Mahomes will just be magic. Maybe he'll be like the game in Denver where Denver really could have beat them. I trust to go with the coach that I like more, Sean McVay and Andy Reid. I trust to go with a brilliant offense, a brilliant staff, Todd Gurley, but Sue and Donald will make the difference. There is a chance this game will get very ugly for Kansas City. There is a chance the Chiefs don't score more than 21 points. Give me the Rams 42. Give me the Chiefs 24. Bloodbath, Rams win. Another game, if you are a better, which I love. A game that a lot of people make fun of all the time. A lot of people make fun of NFL games. And say, oh, this game's barely watchable. I love the way the Cardinals are playing. If you go to a sports bar, if you watch that Chiefs-Cardinals game, Chandler Jones is playing unbelievable football. Hassan Reddick is playing with great instincts. Steve Wilkes is finding his rhythm as a play caller for the defense. Josh Rosen is actually having some impressive drives. Byron Leftwich is growing as his role, as Byron Leftwich has incredible potential as a future head coach and a great, great play caller. This offense is humming right now. Fitzy's playing well. Christian Kirk can finally have a consistent big game. David Johnson is finding his roots again. The Cardinals defense will rock the Raiders. These are two one-win teams. One team is trying to tank and it's having a historically terrible year in the Raiders. And again, the jury on John Gruden hasn't been written yet. I love Chucky as a person. Love him as a person. I'm worried that he overruns his players into the ground. That he doesn't have respect for their work ethic. That he just trades players too quickly. He doesn't treat his players with care. I would not love... The thing is about the Raiders is he traded their whole team... And the problem with Chucky is that he committed himself to the Raiders by being too nice of a guy. He would open his arms to the players like Cooper and talk up Cooper all offseason, talk, 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 and then he'd release him. And then it hurts more than if Gruden was just pretty quiet, if Gruden was a little bit matter-of-fact. I don't like Reggie McKenzie in this role at all. I think he's older, and I think him and John have no cohesiveness together. It's time for John to take part and be the general manager and get a young guy that's his intern so John can make all the decisions. I'm worried about John. I'm worried about his lack of explosive plays in the passing game. I'm worried about not going up tempo at all. I am worried. He has been out of coaching for years, but he is modern in ways. He's modern in that he has cameras everywhere. He, he knows how to watch film better than anybody. He cares. He loves the organization. And he'll make tough decisions in honor of the Oakland Raiders. I love that they have a lot of picks. John Gruden, if I could say one thing to you, Coach Gruden, as a guy who absolutely loves the enthusiasm you bring, as a guy who loves every play call that you've ever called, I'm talking about on Monday Night Football, as a guy that just loves the game of football and I think is a terrific person and a terrific human being that I'd love to be a friend. John, do me a favor. Continue to run your own show. Don't listen to haters. There are so many haters out there. You know what's right. Go down swinging your way. Be definitive. Don't be afraid to fail.
and thank you, John Gruden, for making difficult decisions. The Amari Cooper trade was difficult. The Khalil Mack decision was difficult. It could still work out. John needs to run his show. Stop listening to everybody and do what's right. And I think John's doing that, so I'm proud of him. But in this game, the Cards are going to slaughter the Raiders. Give me the five points. Cardinals win 14 points and going away. First half will be a joke. Second half, a joke. Cardinals absolutely destroy the Oakland Raiders. Mitchell Trubisky. I just did a film review on this guy. He is so confident. It is a wonderful energy. Matt Nagy makes the game fun. He, did, he, he understands his players, that they don't like to be overworked. He simplifies things. He, craw, he calls incredible gadget plays where he will run two receivers to a certain spot, and then they will fake it, and then they will go deep. He knows how to manipulate defenders, meaning two receivers will run a little curl route, and one will sneak out the back and go deep. The more I think about this game, after watching Matt Nagy against the Lions, I am convinced the Bears will hammer the Vikings. Give me the Bears all day long. Give me Mitchell Trubisky. Give me the Chicago Bears. Games that are scary that suicide league guys will put on games. And maybe I'll end up being wrong. I would not take the Saints in the suicide league in a survivor league. The Eagles still have a pulse. Carson Wentz, Zach Ertz, underdog spot. In New Orleans, without getting Sidney Jones back, the whole world is against them. Everybody thinks the Saints are going to absolutely kill the Eagles. I do not trust the Saints that much. They are a really great team, but every team can slip up. This Eagles team is a scary opponent. Stay away. Carolina going to Detroit. Stay away. You don't know how Matt Patricia's team will respond. Some weeks they come out great. They're unpredictable. They're not dead yet. Stay away. Stay away from the Panthers-Lions game. A game I like. You got to be definitive somewhere on the schedule. I'll give you two games I like. I like the Bengals over the Ravens. I love Hugh Jackson. Coming to coach this team with Marvin. It's a great story of friends getting together again. I like the Bengals over a quarterback that's never taken a snap. Lamar Jackson. Oh, he's probably never thrown a pass. It's all gadget plays for Lamar Jackson. He might someday be decent. I don't think he's going to be very good. Because I just don't think he was a great thrower at Louisville under Bobby Petrino. But maybe Lamar Jackson will surprise me. I have nothing against the kid. I hope he proves me wrong. Lastly, I'll go with the Giants this week over Fitzpatrick. Turnovers, good defense. Don't trust Fitzpatrick on the road in the cold. Aaron Rodgers. Last part of my argument as it's getting bright in here. Getting a little bit tired as well. Aaron Rodgers. People don't like Aaron Rodgers. People like Aaron Rodgers because they don't like Tom Brady. They want Aaron to be the best of all time. I grew up really hating Tom Brady. Now I kind of respect Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. It's gone from a hate to these guys are so damn good. It is what it is. They're going to be good every year. People want Aaron to be the best. They also hate Tom Brady. It's just like Michael Jordan and LeBron James. You either hate LeBron James because you love Michael Jordan. He is always two sentences away. Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers are always two sentences away from one another. You can always sniff out a person who loves Tom Brady if they don't like Aaron Rodgers and vice versa. Aaron is the most talented player to ever play the game. He can make throws that nobody can dream of making. The best thrower of the football that we've ever seen in our lives. But he's not the best leader. He doesn't elevate his team in clutch spots in moments that he needs to. The Seattle game, other games. He is kind of like Drew Brees right now. 
He's probably not going to win a whole lot until maybe in four or five years he'll win. A little bit difficult to get along with. Teammates don't universally love him. I'm more of a Favre guy myself in terms of leadership. I like the common man, not the elitist. And that's what Aaron Rodgers is. Great player, but overrated right now. Needs to start winning. I care about quarterbacks who win football games. With that, those are my picks this week. I hope you guys really enjoyed the video. It would be great if you really enjoyed it. Have a wonderful night. I guess I'm going to probably post this tomorrow. Take care. Tune into Insomnia Sports. Let me know what you're thinking in the video. Have a wonderful night. Take care, guys. Thanks for tuning in.